we can officially say that 2021 is over. And what a year, huh? But before we can move on and see what 2022 has in store for us, we need to give last year one final send-off. Last month we opened up voting for the Source Game Awards 2021, the Sources, if you will, and we got a great number of votes in for the games that you all believe deserved the spotlight as the best of the best. There were many fantastic titles in the running, and now it is my privilege to reveal the results. Get your popcorn and leftover New Year's party poppers ready as I go through the categories for the best games of 2021. Best Remake or Remaster While the industry is constantly pumping out new games, we wanted to begin these awards by acknowledging the returning classics, because even old games can feel new. In this category, we took a look at the classic titles that have been rebuilt for a modern platform, whether completely from the ground up or piecemeal. These titles received new light in 2021 and these were the nominations. And the winner is Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. The Super Monkey Ball franchise is beloved and had been teasing a comeback of some sort after the HD remake of Banana Blitz in 2019. While that didn't quite live up to expectations, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania certainly did for most. This title remade the first two games in the series as well as the deluxe port on PS2, but ended up being so much more than those games combined. Pulling in elements from across the entire Super Monkey Ball franchise, the game truly felt like a celebration of this beloved classic. Best Port While remakes can bring older titles back from the brink and give them new life, sometimes even modern titles need that support. Whether that's because they were released on a console with a small install base, or they are simply going multi-plat now after being exclusive for a short time, a port of a current game opens it up to a new audience. But ports aren't always a simple affair, and so deserve to be celebrated as much as any other title. But which port left the best impression this year? And the winner is Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. After what felt like an eternity, Nintendo bestowed upon us what we'd all been asking for, Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury for the hot hot price of $60. And the package, while still great, improves upon itself in small ways, making Mario not just faster but smoother and more versatile in how he can move about, adopting Odyssey's mid-air dive while also being able to ground pound into pipes instantly. 
There are obvious consequences to the Switch hardware, like the changes from touch to motion controls in some instances while Miiverse is basically gone, but on the whole it's a good step up in game feel and presentation to other smaller changes. But the big addition here is Bowser's Fury, as it aims to find a middle ground between Odyssey and 3D World, creating a semi-linear, semi-sandbox world that, while short, still feels like the burgeoning of a greater game, with the spectacle to satisfy and thanks to a solid lineup of levels and experience exploration, it's a sign of what will hopefully come for Mario in the future, and a great addition to an already great game. Best Debut Game The gaming industry can be a harsh place for newcomers. Sometimes breaking through the sea of releases to find success can be really difficult. That's why we really should be celebrating the developers and titles who have taken the plunge and made their debut this year. But even amongst the sea of newcomers, there are a few who stood out above the rest. But who stood out the most? And the winner is... Kenna Bridge of Spirits! Nintendo fans may remember the gorgeous animated short Majora's Mask Terrible Fate. It was a stunning fan-made love letter by those who loved the game. And five years later, that CG team made their very first game, Kenna Bridge of Spirits. Ember Labs have always been a CG studio, and it's fascinating seeing that prowess adapted to video games. When you hear the word indie, you might think pixel art or 8-bit, but that really doesn't describe any form of game anymore. An indie game can be something that pushes the boundaries, something beautiful. And more than that, an indie game can be something different. Kenna doesn't follow the blueprint of God of War or Uncharted or The Last of Us. If anything, this is more of a PlayStation 2 era kind of game, kind of like Star Fox Adventures. And it's just pure fun to play a game like that with this visual fidelity. Best Use of Hardware whether it be home consoles, handhelds, VR, or mobile, there are many forms of hardware that we play video games on, and each one offers something unique that can change up how we play a video game. Whether this be something as simple as Rumble or complex as AR, leveraging the best of the hardware we have produces unique experiences. But which games of 2021 use their hardware to the fullest? Here are the nominees. And the winner is... Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. With so many games releasing cross-generation this year, I've been eagerly anticipating a PS5 title that will pull no punches, and Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart absolutely delivers. This adventure sports not only gorgeous worlds, but seamless interdimensional travel between them. The DualSense's adaptive triggers, haptic feedback, and audio capabilities greatly enhance the feel of this duo's arsenal. Rift Apart is a brilliant demonstration of the PS5's new hardware, while simultaneously creating a new high point in one of Sony's most iconic franchises. Best Quality of Life and Accessibility Feature 
Video games are for everyone and should be a frustration free experience. That's why we should celebrate all the little touches that make games more available for everyone, whether that be options for colour blindness or the ability to seamlessly drop a game and pick it up later. The more options, the better, as they say. And the winner is... Mario Party Superstars! The Super Mario franchise has become world famous thanks to its ease of accessibility, so it only makes sense that a Mario game focused on straightforward multiplayer minigames would rank as the most accessible game in 2021. Mario Party Superstars is a culmination of all of the greatest offerings that the Mario Party franchise has provided over the years, and that has led to it becoming both a great game to just pick up and play with a friend, as well as a celebration of many of Mario Party's greatest outings over the past two decades. In the truest sense, it really is a simple pick up and play game that anyone can enjoy. And for that reason, that's why I, Yo Schiller, nominated it in the quality of life slash accessibility category. Plus, take it from some guy who actually doesn't play Mario Party that often, I absolutely loved this game. So it makes me happy to see that so many others agree. Best User Interface It doesn't matter how good the core gameplay loop is in a video game if the user interface is garbage. Bad UI can make a game unnecessarily frustrating, boring to look at, and confusing. UI design is an art, and that's why we want to celebrate some of the best 2021 had to offer, whether that be smart uses of on-screen text or graphics to present precise information to the player. How intuitive the game can be, even when it's lacking text to explain the game. Bonus points if the graphics are styling. And the winner is... Persona 5 Scramble! Persona 5 was already known for its styling and memorable UI, and Persona 5 Scramble continues this trend expertly. Despite being made by an entirely new team, this game managed to capture all the style and function of the original title's UI, and deliver it once more in a visual treat for the eyes. It supports the gameplay and the game's aesthetic, and is a worthy award winner. Best Audio Design It's time to talk sound, and before we get to the OSTs we've all been bopping to this year, we should get more atmospheric, and celebrate the audio designs of video games. From little touches like the sound of footsteps to clever gameplay experiences where audio plays as much a pivotal role as sight does, these are the games that use sound to their advantage to enhance the gaming experience to its fullest. Thank you. 
And the winner is... Metroid Dread. You might as well award this to the Emmy units rather than Metroid Dread. Consider how anxiety-inducing it is to hear an Emmy chirping while it comes for you, not to mention the indescribable noise it makes in your two narrow windows of opportunity to break free if caught, which is no doubt burned into your brain if you got caught and or died a lot to them. To get a sense of how good the sound design is, try to imagine this level of auditory polish given to the SAX and how frightening that would be. Metroid Dread is full of impressive sound design like this, and that's why it easily earned this award. Best Original Score and OST. Now we move on to the soundtrack, and nowadays it's very rare that a game gets released with a bad soundtrack. Even some of the most disappointing games of this year still have OSTs that we can bop to. So when a soundtrack manages to break through and become something truly memorable, that's an achievement worth celebrating. And the winner is... Deltarune Chapter 2. Building on the excellent score for Deltarune Chapter 1, the soundtrack for Deltarune Chapter 2 is catchy, haunting, and engaging at every turn. The compositions of Toby Fox, Lena Rain, and Marcy Neighbors perfectly capture the frenetic cyber world, a chaotic metropolis filled with wonder and danger. Each location in the setting, each eccentric character, they all have a piece of musical accompaniment that just feels right. It's an eclectic collection of tracks comprising great battle themes, odd musical interludes, and changing Liet motifs, and none of them fail to excite and surprise. Every track from Chapter 2 is a bit silly or thrilling, a bit spooky or ominous, but never anything less than exquisite. Best Original Song Even if an entire soundtrack is outstanding, there is always that one song that excels above the rest, an original arrangement that gets stuck in our heads and listened to on repeat over and over again. This category celebrates those songs and the artists who made them. So which individual tracks got the attention of our eardrums this year? And the winner is Big Shot by Toby Fox. Toby Fox gave us another fantastic soundtrack this year, so it's no surprise that the fan favorite piece got a nomination here. But what makes Big Shot deserve the win is how out of left field it is. We have a tribute to Fox's previous characters and themes, the hype from Spamton, one of the year's most memorable characters. Fans were right to expect a follow up to The World Revolving, but first reference Jebel's piece, Metaton Neo's short lived encounter, The Mad Dummy, and Expand Spamps' already interesting battle theme was a level of ambition no one could have seen coming. Suddenly, an exciting boss battle feels a lot faster than how infamous Now's Your Chance to Be a Big Shot makes every move feel that much more impactful. Best Character Design 
When we play video games, even ones where the player is self-inserted, we are playing characters, and so character design is key. A great character design can get information to the player without any words, showcase the mechanics of the game clearly, or just be bundles of fun to both look at and play as. It takes a lot of work to design characters, so which game do we all think had the best character designs of 2021? And the winner is... No More Heroes 3! More than the character designs in any game I've played in 2021, No More Heroes 3 hooked me right off the bat with the colorful and, fittingly, alien designs of its superhero antagonists. The superhero's contrasts of strange patterns and neon colors displayed with more standard humanoid body types made them feel otherworldly. I think for some, they just look so cool that I started worrying about how tough their battles would be. All of this is why I nominated the game for best character design, and it seems like those feelings were mutual. Thanks to Sho Takiguchi and Yusuke Kozaki for their usual work with designs in No More Heroes. But a special thanks to Masanori Ushiki who designed Fu and most of the other awesome alien antagonists. Best Animation Direction The game's graphics can be as pretty or realistic as a developer wants, but if the character and objects in that world move in boring or janky ways, it can break immersion and make a game look poorly made or worse, bland. In the complete opposite direction, good character animation can vastly improve a game and deliver both exciting and memorable moments. 2021 had several games with great animation, some that aimed to wow and others that had gameplay benefits, but who did it the best? And the winner is... Guilty Gear Strive! Continuing forward since Guilty Gear's second step into the realm of 3D graphics and art direction, Arc System Works has once again evolved the Guilty Gear franchise, not just in terms of gameplay, but also in terms of graphical and artistic presentation. While Guilty Gear Exart captured the eyes of many with its anime-like art style that skillfully captured the look and elements of 2D illustration and animation with elements of smearing and squash and stretch, Guilty Gear Strive heightens these attributes and the animation of its characters to not only have a kinetic and fast-paced fighting game, but to also make the actions feel immersive. The increased usage of particle and visual effects such as the shaping of the wind that gathers around the characters and follows their heavier movements, like Souls Forward Slash, help create the feeling that there is a spatial environment affected by the characters outside of the dust that kicks up at their feet. The usage of the camera has further allowed for the capturing of characters' raw emotion and details, such as the dilation of Soul's peoples during Tyrant Rave, or the solitary movement of Axolotl's hair and the weight of his jacket as he steps from his time portal in his intro. 
Furthermore, the dynamic use of the camera and the way that it's been made to either quickly approach the character or slowly pan out to create transitions between the character's high detailed models and lesser highly detailed models is so seamless that the recognition of it even occurring didn't happen for me until I modded the camera of the game to see it for myself. Guilty Gear Strive not only retains the fast paced nature that's been a part of it since inception from 20 years ago, but goes far beyond what was necessary to create a game that feels constantly at a blissful motion even during its most simplest moments. Best Art Direction Graphics are always improving and thus will always age, but art direction is eternal and can keep games from over two decades ago looking better than some modern titles. An art style can really make a game and improve its overall presentation and production design. Here are the games with the best art styles of 2021. And the winner is... No More Heroes 3! Continuing the tradition of making striking games that stand the test of time, No More Heroes 3 is the latest in a long line of games from Grasshopper Manufacture that oozes style with a grace seen only under the direction of Suda51. Art director Kunihiko Taniwaki, who worked with Grasshopper since Killer7 as a chief character designer, had his chance to shine in No More Heroes 3, being in charge of all aspects of the visuals. And he certainly delivered. Characters pop with vibrant colors, and environments are striking and well-constructed, running through several different styles over the course of the game. All of this is brought together in a bright, cel-shaded style that helps the game stand out from its contemporaries. The place where it sticks out most evidently is perhaps its slick UI. Since the Silver Case in 1999, Grasshopper games have had excellent UI, and this is true here as well. If there's one thing in No More Heroes 3 that got every player's attention and adrenaline pumping, it's the kill screen that triggers on beating your final enemy. It's some of the best presentation I've seen in a long time, and one of the many reasons why No More Heroes 3 is a sight to remember. Best Narrative and Writing Visuals and sounds are all key parts of any video game, but good stories can keep players engaged and thinking about a game even outside of playtime. Whether it is a standout plot or great character interactions, a game's narrative can take it from simply a cool experience to something players truly get invested in. And the winner is... The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles was finally localized, bringing two incredible Ace Attorney titles to the West, and undoubtedly the best story in the entire series. These titles had the best narrative of 2021, and definitely deserved to win this category. They were my favorite of the year, and I'm glad so many of you agreed. Best Performance from a Male Actor. In support of immersion in video games, several titles are fully or partially voiced in order to add more depth to characters and the worlds they live in. To accomplish this, great voice acting is essential, so let's turn our attention to the people providing those voices, 
starting with the male actors who graced our games this year. Here are our nominees. Hey there, the editor here, a shadow link. Uh, Nantanjek said the name of the winner wrong, so I'm going to be uh, doing it instead. The winner is... Robin Atkin Downs as Travis Touchdown. Robin Atkin Downs has always been excellent as the ever lovable fool Travis Touchdown, and No More Heroes 3 is his best performance yet. Fans clamored to get him back when it was revealed that he would not be returning for Travis Strikes Again, and he is certainly beloved for good reason. He boasts a full range of emotions in this performance, from the rage and sadness you can feel in Travis's screams, to the warmth and bravado he carries in his more serious scenes, and when it's time for tomfoolery, he becomes the biggest buffoon he can be. A particular favorite touch of mine is how Travis can't say anything Japanese right, despite being a self-professed otaku. His struggling to say Akihabara when opening a gacha pod is just... I love Akihabara! Hilarious. We love you, Robin Atkin Downs. Best performance by a female actor. Just like the movies, we want to have voice acting as two categories, as these are the ones the industry constantly emphasizes. And in an industry where women are starting to play a much larger and important role, we wanted to make sure they would also get celebrated in a key way. So here are the top female performances of 2021. And the winner is Maggie Robertson as Lady Dimitrisk. Not every great performance is a big one, but big is what some characters demand, especially villains as grand and theatrical as Resident Evil Village's vampiric Lady Dimitrisk. Maggie Robertson's excellent vocal and mocap performance goes big and gives life to the character's cruel, vainglorious, and steely personality. As you sneak through Village's terrifying Romanian castle, it's Dimitrescu's snarling voice that warns you of danger. In cutscenes, it alludes to backstory and tragedy just through strong acting. And that performance stands out even in a game filled with truly larger-than-life, wonderfully acted villains. Fitting for a character with a nine-foot frame, it's towering. Best Online Multiplayer Games aren't always experiences that we have alone. These next two categories celebrate the games that we experience simultaneously with others and for the best online multiplayer. We want to look at titles with a heavy emphasis on competitive or cooperative gameplay experiences that we can have with those outside our homes through the wonders of the internet.
and the winner is Guilty Gear Strive. I love fighting games, but have always been too intimidated to try an anime fighter. The subgenre looked amazing, but seemed unplayable for someone unwilling to master all the mechanics. But surprisingly, I couldn't just beat the CPUs in Guilty Gear Strive, I'm managing online. Having not devoted much time to the training or mission modes, that's a miracle and testament to how approachable it is. For a game as flashy and deep as this one, easily one of the best looking fighters ever made, to feel so accessible without sacrificing what fans love about the series is amazing. Thrust is especially good here, with a vampire samurai, rockstar witch, time traveling Brit, hair assassin, and walking fortress that'll suplex you to Nirvana being just a few of the standouts. There are a few flaws here and there, the clunky online lobbies don't do the perfectly smooth online combat justice, but the excitement strive has sparked for both Guilty Gear and anime fighters all over more than earned its win here. Best Offline Multiplayer The counterpart to online multiplayer is offline, same screen, multiplayer. The traditional form of multiplayer that places several players in the same space to share in the same experience, whether against each other or working together. Despite the last two years, local multiplayer is very much alive, and these five nominees prove that full-heartedly. And the winner is... Mario Party Superstars. Mario Party Superstars is basically what Mario Party fans have been clamoring for for a long time. A return to the classic Nintendo 64 titles with a dash of content from the GameCube installments. Ironically, this return and reusage of older content has made for what feels like the most fresh installment in the series. All there's left to say is we hope Nintendo sees the title's warm reception and continues to update the game with more classic boards and characters. Best Ongoing and Live Service Just because a game didn't release in 2021 doesn't mean it didn't receive new content. In this day and age, the shelf life of certain games lasts several years, and those that are supported by the developers in continuously exciting ways deserve a shout out. Whether it's with the introduction of a major expansion pass, ongoing DLC, or just strong community support, this category celebrates the ongoing titles of 2021. And the winner is... Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Are you really surprised? 2021 may have marked the end of support for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but what an ending to go out on. Over the last three years, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has been a constant part of our lives, and with frequent updates, whether it be from spirits, characters, or simply balance patches, the game has been constantly supported. Sakurai deserves a well-earned rest after this, and we can at least see them and the title off with an end-of-year award. Best Platform or Service of the Year 
Video games are delivered to players in many ways nowadays, and this means there are several platforms to pick from, each with their own positives and negatives. Whether that platform is tied to the system the game functions on, or is software based, we wanted to figure out 2021's go-to platform that delivered the best gaming experience of that year. Hello everybody, it's A Shadowlink again. I'm here to introduce you to the nominees for the best platforms. Obviously we have our three current consoles, the Nintendo Switch, the Xbox Series X, and the PlayStation 5. On top of that we have Xbox Game Pass, and finally, Steam. Who won? Well, I'll hand it back over so we can find out. And the winner is... Nintendo Switch. 2021 marks the fourth year that the Nintendo Switch has been on the market, and what a curious year it's been. The release of three next-generation consoles and the announcement of Valve's Steam Deck has made gamers adamant that the Switch would stumble and fall behind due to its lack of power. But none of that has seemed to matter in the long run as the Switch continues to be the console selling the most units month after month. On top of that, gamers seem to be generally pleased with Nintendo's output of big sequels to big franchises, as well as remakes and remasters of older beloved titles. Meanwhile, Indie and third-party support continues to be just as plentiful as previous years. Perhaps things may change in 2022, but with some websites already reporting the system surpassing 100 million units sold, we have a feeling the Switch will continue to impress. Game of the Year And finally, we have made it to the end. What is our Game of the Year 2021? There were a lot of fantastic titles released last year, more than any one person could play, and that is why we want to thank everyone who nominated games, and all of you who voted for this video. After tallying the votes, we have reached the conclusion on which title gets the saucy for Game of the Year 2021, and it's one of these five nominees. And the winner of Game of the Year 2021 is... Metroid Dread! It has been almost 20 years since the last original 2D Metroid, and the gaming industry was ecstatic to see the launch of Metroid Dread, the fifth entry in the original Metroid storyline, to finally get released. And it did not disappoint. From the high intensity action of the Emmy chase, to the extremely natural feeling gameflow and exciting combat. Metroid Dread was just a fun game to play. It let players feel like they were exploring an alien planet at their own pace and in their own direction, while skillfully leading players in a direction that allowed for a natural difficulty curve. But it did this while never holding the player's hand and presented those with keen eyes and a daring disposition to break free from their own path with sequence breaking that was rewarded in a way no other previous title had done. Metro Dread had a lot of anticipation behind it and a lot of expectations to live up to and needless to say it met those with flying colours. Samus was back and from us to her, she has earned our Source Game of the Year award for Best Game of 2021. And thank you all for watching. If I could give you all an award for best audience of 2021, I would. A big congratulations to every winner of each category, and a special thanks to our guests in this video who took the time to record winning speeches for some of these categories. 
So thank you, John from Nintendo Life, Tris from Game Explain, Bryhard Gaming, Reset, and Yoshila. Links to all of these lovely people's social and channels will be below. Also, a special thank you to all of our patrons who support us. We have some good plans for 2022, both on the YouTube channel front and the website front, and so we hope you stick with us on our journey. Speaking of the website, if you head over there right now, you can catch our write-up of the gaming industry as a whole in 2021. It's also written by our newest staff member, Sunshine Feeler, so go and show your love. With that, let's all look forward to 2022 together, which you can do by always remembering to return to the source. <laughs>